the FBI Latent Hit of the Year is awarded annually to an outstanding latent examiner or officer who solved a major violent crime by using the FBI's IAFIS database. 2011, Jill Kincaid and James Ramsey. Diane Jackson was on her way to work for the phone company, and when she left her car to walk into work, someone grabbed her and took her into a shed that was in an abandoned gas station. There he raped her and robbed her, murdered her. After he murdered her, he stole her Mustang. HPD was able to recover some of his fingerprints from that vehicle. She was my oldest sister, and uh, she was five years older than I, and we were pretty close. When she was killed, we had really took it hard, as you can imagine. Well, I know the effect that Diane's murder had on David. At the time, he was going to become an attorney. But after this happened, I started looking at law enforcement. My goal was become a Texas Ranger and try and solve my sister's murder. Later on, as my dad was quite elderly, every time I'd go see him, he'd ask me to please solve Diane's murder before he died. In 1975, I joined the Houston Police Department, and I would see David more and more, and we became good friends. I know they've been friends for over 20 years, and how Jim Ramsey really looked up to David. In 2003, David approached me, and he told me that his sister had been murdered in Houston back in 1969. He was shocked. He was shocked that we had known each other for over 30 years, and that he didn't know that my sister had been murdered and then it was an unsolved case. I dare say there wasn't anybody I worked with who knew about it. But I was honored that out of all the people that David knows, and David knows everybody in Texas law enforcement, that he had asked me to, to look into it. He said, absolutely. You let me know what I can do and, and I'll do it. Uh, I got the case file, very extensive, and to my dismay, all the other evidence that had been uh, collected that day had just had been thrown out at a later time. So then I began to look for the, the crime scene photos, and I learned that they were missing. The pictures had somehow gotten out of the evidence room and been sold to this uh, detective magazine. Those are the only pictures that now existed. And then the one piece of good evidence that we really needed, the, uh, the prints that were on the outside of the car, they had been lost. So they assigned four or five people to go through all the uh, unsolved cases. And we're talking about thousands and thousands of just manila folders with, with print cards inside. And they found it in a 1986 case. They just put it back in the wrong file. And now we have a chance. At least we have a chance to maybe identify, you know, Diane's murderer. When we first got the print in, I entered the print through APHIS and I didn't make an identification. So our procedure was if we didn't hit it in our system, then we had the IAFIS from the FBI available to us. When that first candidate came up, we just, it was just like, oh my gosh, this looks like it's probably gonna be a hit. We got the fingerprint card, Jill compared it, and I looked at it also. We decided it was a hit, and I mean, it was just, we were just so excited. I mean, we just couldn't believe it. Okay, where do we go from here? That was the first, got it? First glimmer of hope in the whole case. Who is it? Now we have a track, we have a trail to run down, we have a name, and we immediately started researching uh, James Ray Davis. Well, for obvious reasons, David could not be the one to go and confront Davis. I had to back out of the investigation and just have hands off and let Jim do it. And that's one of the weightiest jobs I've, I've had. A lot of trepidation. I was, uh, I was pretty nervous. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure. But I will say that uh, there's nobody I'd rather have doing it than Jim. First of all, we located Davis in Texarkana. We knocked on the door, 
And we heard a voice say, come in. I said, Mr. Davis, we're with the Houston Police Department. Well, his demeanor changed totally then, because he knew. He was able to talk him into going down to Texas County Police Department and have an inter interview down there. It was Diane's car, wasn't it? I pulled a picture of Diane's car. It's a 68 red Mustang out. And I laid it on the table in front of him. And he adamantly said, I've never seen that vehicle, never in my life. I said, you've never seen a 68 Mustang? Mr. Davis, I want to show you a picture. Then I pulled a picture of, of Diane that David had given me. And I handed him, and he wouldn't take it. And he wouldn't look at it. I, I knew he was, I, I mean, I, I was absolutely convinced he was our, our killer. Uh, we really needed a confession in order to get charges filed. He began to open up, and I covertly turned on a recorder. Mr. Davis, you're doing a good job of telling the truth. I want right. you to be totally truthful. I'm just pretending to do it. She went to screaming and hollering, and I had a Dutch knife, and I just stabbed her one or two times, and I jumped up and ran. You took money from her, you stabbed her, and then you took her car. Right. And I got him to admit to the murder and to taking her car, but he would not admit to the sexual assault. Rangers. But I was able to call David Maxwell and tell him that uh, I think my words were, we hit it out of the park. Yeah. Gosh, I'll never forget it. I, <laughs> we were both crying. There's no way to describe how I felt and, and what it meant to me to know that we were going to bring him to justice. And it wasn't long afterwards that David's dad did pass away. He was in his 90s. But when he died, he knew that his daughter's murder had faced justice. He said, you know, David, I've worked lots of homicides, but he said, this is the most important uh, case I've ever worked in my career, which that meant a lot to me. Because at one point, we had nothing, nothing to go on. But the FBI enabled us to close a case that we wouldn't have closed with just our database. And so if we hadn't had IAFIS, we would have never hit this. One day, a lab director was standing in the hall with a real tall man with a cowboy hat on. He goes, are you Jill? And I said, yes. And he goes, I'm David. And he just said, can I give you a hug? And I said, yeah. Tap into the power of IAFIS. To learn more about using IAFIS latent services, go to fbi.gov. To submit for the Latent Hit of the Year Award, send an email to fbilatenthit at leo.gov.